Welcome to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. In this video, we're going to discuss a way to build the core of a commander deck around Miram Sentinel Worm as its general. <laughs> Thank you for choosing MTG Burgeoning for your Magic the Gathering content. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this video and consider becoming a subscriber. Doing so supports the channel and makes you eligible for our various subscriber reward series. If you would like to support the channel further, then click the link to our Patreon page in the description below. There you can join our ongoing Pack Wars series as a one month supporter or ongoing member. Or, try joining Pack Wars for free by commenting on every MTG burgeoning video in a month. We strive to offer creative rewards through our various Patreon tiers. So if Pack Wars isn't for you, then something else will be. Links to our content and various subscriber rewards series can be found in the description below. Send us an email, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. We are your channel for all things magic. Miram Sentinel Worm is a 6-6 legendary dragon with flying and ward 2. Whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under our control, we create a token that's a copy of it, except the token isn't legendary if that dragon is legendary. Let's begin building this core with some resource-creating dragons. Clouth, Unrivaled Ancient, creates X mana in any combination of colors where X is the total power of attacking creatures we control. We have this mana until the end of turn, and it can only be used to cast spells. Clouth is a legendary dragon, but remember, the token created by Miram is not. For mana generation that lasts past one turn, Old Gnawbone's presence could be game-ending particularly if a second copy is created by Miram. Each time one of our creatures deals combat damage to a player, it triggers both copies of Old Gnawbone. For more mana acceleration, let's add Ancient Copper Dragon. With the lucky roll of a d20, we could create a bounty of treasure tokens. We could roll two d20s if we duck combat damage to opponents with two Ancient Copper Dragons. Thanks to Miram, of course. Continuing this trend of creating resource disparity between us and our opponents, Ancient Silver Dragon could draw us so many cards with the lucky roll of a d20. These cards remain in our hand because we don't have a maximum hand size for the rest of the game. This potential card drawing feat, once again, can be doubled with a Miram created token copy of Ancient Silver Dragon. Let's add some utilities secondary to our dragon selections. Our opponent's armies are vulnerable already to Balefire Dragon, but what about sending two copies of it into combat? There aren't too many creatures that can survive taking 12 points of direct damage if an opponent is dealt combat damage by two Balefire Dragons. Corlesa Scale Singer allows us to look at the top card of our library at any time, and we may cast dragon spells from the top of our library as well. This effect makes the top of our library an extension of our hand, and with filtering or library manipulation, we easily can optimize the chances of casting dragon spells from the top of our library. Thunderbreak Regent will deal 3 damage to the opponent that targets a dragon we control with a spell or ability. 3 damage is not a lot in EDH, but 6 damage may make an opponent think twice. Now let's talk endgame. Lothless Dragon Queen is a legendary dragon, but remember, the token created by Miram is not, and having two Lothlesses is so much better than having one. Lothless creates a 5-5 red dragon creature token with flying each time a non-token dragon enters the battlefield under our control. Imagine creating two of those 5-5 dragons instead. Utvara Hellkite creates a 6-6 red dragon creature token with flying whenever a dragon we control attacks. Notice the text. It says whenever a dragon we control attacks and not whenever one or more dragons we control attack. 
create double the number of these dragons with the token copy provided by Miram. Let's increase the pressure on our opponents by including Terror of the Peaks. Having two Terror of the Peaks on our side of the battlefield could be game-ending. The same could be said about Scourge of Valkus. Whenever it or any other dragon enters the battlefield under our control, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of dragons we control. Since dragons are quite mana intensive, we need to add options for cheating them into play as well as reducing their costs. Sneak Attack is a powerful enchantment that allows us to put a creature card from our hand into play with haste, and then we sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step, in conjunction with our general, although the dragon that snuck onto the battlefield is sacrificed at the beginning of the end step, the token created by Miram is not. Quicksilver Amulet puts a creature from our hand onto the battlefield for 4 mana at instant speed, and it sticks. For half of Quicksilver Amulet's activation cost, Monster Manual does the same thing, but with the added upside of taking an adventure. With a little bit of luck or top-of-library manipulation, Lurking Predators puts a creature card from the top of our library directly into play whenever an opponent casts a spell. Remember, Miram's ability triggers whenever a dragon enters the battlefield. She doesn't care how it enters, she cares just that it enters. As long as we can keep the Monarch, Court of Bounty allows us to put a creature or a land onto the battlefield at the beginning of our upkeep. Summoning Trap has us look at the top seven cards of our library and put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. A well-timed Salvala Stampede could be game-ending, particularly if our hand is stocked and our library is teeming with winged biggins. Dragon Spear Shaman reduces dragon spells we cast by two, and Dragon Lord Servant reduces them by one. For a little more staying power, Herald's Horn is an artifact that reduces the cost of our dragon spells by one, but also provides potential card draw. Urza's Incubator, another artifact, reduces the cost of our dragon spells by two. Sarkhan Unbroken does not reduce the cost of our spells, but does add one mana of any color to our mana pool and a card to our hand for plus one loyalty. His minus two ability creates a 4-4 dragon, and his minus eight ability is game ending in a dedicated dragon tribal deck. Our plan is to have a lot of dragons enter our side of the battlefield, so let's take greater advantage of this by including Garrick's Uprising. This enchantment gives our creatures Trample, replaces itself as long as we control a creature with power 4 or greater, and will draw us additional cards whenever creatures we control with power 4 or greater enter the battlefield. Teamer Ascendancy has the same card draw trigger, but gives our creatures Haste instead of Trample. Elemental Bond strips away keyword enabling, but reduces the needed power of a creature entering our side of the battlefield from 4 to 3 in order to draw a card. The creature tokens created by Miram trigger these enchantments as well, not just the dragon cards entering the battlefield. The Great Henge provides mana ramp, peripheral life gain, and draws us a card whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control. Those creatures also get a plus one plus one counter. Kindred Discovery will net us a card whenever a dragon we control enters the battlefield or attacks. Dragon Tempest, a potential game ender, gives flying creatures we control haste, and whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under our control, it deals damage equal to the number of dragons we control to any target. Let's complete the core of this build by optimizing and enhancing the deck's theme. Fierce Guardianship prevents an opponent from interacting with our general. Deflecting SWAT does the same, with the potential of punishing an opponent or an opponent's permanent as an added bonus. Both Fierce Guardianship and Deflecting SWAT are free to cast as long as Miram is on our side of the battlefield. Steely Resolve protects all of our dragons by giving them Shroud. Asceticism gives creatures we control Hexproof and Regeneration. Heroic Intervention protects our entire board by giving permanents we control hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Sarkin's Triumph tutors for a dragon creature card at instant speed. 
Although Spark Double is an illusion, it enters the battlefield as a dragon by copying a dragon we control as it comes into play. Copy Miram with Spark Double for all kinds of token generating shenanigans. Although we generally do not delve into removal spells when building a core around a commander, if Blasphemous Act is added as a part of our removal suite, then we must include Wrathful Red Dragon. The synergy adds another potential win condition through direct damage. As foreshadowed earlier in this video, let's manage the top of our library and the cards in our hand with Scroll Rack. And let's also include a copy of Sylvan Library for the purposes of library manipulation or creating another card draw outlet. Another option is Miri's Guile, which allows us to rearrange the top three cards of our library at the beginning of our upkeep. This video provided a blueprint for building the core of a commander deck around Miram Sentinel Worm as its general. Removal spells, ramp, and the land base can vary from build to build and also are dependent on metagame preferences and availability. The cards discussed during this video are suggested options for taking advantage of Miram's token creating ability in addition to providing ways to optimize this theme. Let me know your thoughts about these recommendations in the comment section below. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.